Okay. Here we got a 1966 Belvedere that he's owned since 1997. 97. But you just now got it restored the last what? I've been driving it 14 years. Oh, you have? Okay. That well, paint, I was thinking it was just a few years. That job is 14 years It don't old. look it. And uh, I'll show you this. Come here and we'll... That's a BMW I'm, Black is what it is. I'm with uh, Keith Sayre, the owner of this car. Uh, wow. We've done everything new in here. My wife and I, we actually, when you're on a poor budget, we done the seats like five years before I done the car and put them upstairs to the house till we could... Uh, it's a beautiful so we can instrument. Do it. I think panel. she rolled over 48,000 miles. Uh, yeah, it's got 48,616 on it going to the Mopar Nationals last year. Now, do you think that's been rolled over before you got it? Oh, no, no. Okay. You know all about it. Yes. That's cool. Man, that's a it nice. 30, 35,000 on it. It was sun When I bought it in 97. Okay. And uh, as you can see, we when we restored it, we. Uh, it really wasn't bad. The car wasn't bad at all. That's why I was going to ask what, what kind of condition it was in. And uh, we, uh, the floors were great and everything. It, it was a, a factory gold car. Uh -huh. And when I got it, it was turquoise. Okay. And uh, then uh, the uh, wow, the tubs, we extended them seven and a quarter inches. But it looks factory. And then Steve Durbin. A friend of mine, he's the one that come up with all these plans. We have two frame rails under it. Uh -huh. We bought one out in Columbus. I think the boys were out of Colorado that sold it to me. But we, we uh, it has two frame rails under it. And that's as big. I wanted to go bigger on the tars. I wanted to go 18 fives. But I what went 15 fives because I got to keep the back seat. No roll cage, no nothing. I it's think they look just right on it. It's solid. It hooks up great. But the floor was... Uh, we had to take the spare car out for you guys to know what a B-body is. Yeah. So we made it solid. Uh, people like to steal your gas caps. So uh, Steve Durbin and, and uh, Charlie Smith, good friends of mine, helped me do a lot to this car. I couldn't have done it without them. We come up, we cut oh. the bumper, and they narrowed a 70 Roadrunner gas tank. And, huh. uh, and these little rubber things here, I put you see a little glue there, but uh, the, the, All right. the plate went back in. So uh, a friend of mine that I worked with, Todd Anderson, uh, we do heating and cooling. Those are the plugs out of a heating cooling unit I put there. So that's a poor man's setup. But, I, I, I understand that. But, uh, and you know, the, the tail lights, I think, come out of Canada. Uh, this tail piece is the original tail piece. I took it down to this, what most people do, but then I mask it and I painted it. And then my wife painted the Plymouth by hand. And then well, you uh, couldn't tell that it looks. I mean, that looks professional. It uh, and it done a good job. And let me show you what she done inside. I got to show you that on the inside. Everything you see here that on this dash, uh -huh. Plymouth, the emblem, lights, wiper, anything she, that's gray. She did that. She hand painted that. That's all hand done. But like I say, we done the seats like five years before I done the car because I just didn't have the money. Uh -huh. Those sun gauges right there. Yeah. 1971, uh, I bought them off of Randy Roush. He took them out of his Nova our senior year. And I bought them and I had them in boxes, all that stuff, till, um, till you got till till you I, used till I got to this car. Wow, that's cool. It's, and uh, man, uh, So you got something here that's over 50 years old in it, huh? Or no, that many years I've drove her out to the Mopar Nationals. This isn't a trailer queen, this is a driver. That's this, the way to do them. This paint's 14 years old, and uh, we drive it. I put 13,000 miles on. This engine here, it's probably only three years old. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ron Polly, uh, my other 440 blowed up and uh, I took my car over to his house and when I, I went on vacation and come back, he had built me this 440. And uh, yeah, he's good about so that. it's it's a it's a great sound motor. It's got oh, a comp cam good. in it. It does a good job, which you can hear it run here in a little bit. Do you know um, an idea what kind of horsepower you're pushing? It's probably 415, 430. I mean, it, it nice. runs on pump gas. That's I run nice. 93 in it, and it does a great job. You got the old school battery. Well, top that, that's it. actually a cap, Willie. Oh, you, the top. Buy, yeah, oh, the okay. top. That was a nap. Uh, that was a battery I got and just peeled the stickers off of so it. So you buy them to make them look old. That yeah, is you so can cool. Buy that, and uh, but it's just like I say, the old thing. Uh, all the chrome on this car. All the grill on the side chrome and the tailpiece and everything are original, except these lenses. And what I've done, I stripped these down and then masked that black and the silver argent, just redone them. 
And uh, the only thing that's not original is this headlight bezel here. I had a big dent in it, and I, uh -huh. I've got I've got so many of those. That's a beautiful emblem. I never noticed that before where it says 440 now, right there. Okay, that's that's actually, they don't reproduce a 66 emblem. That is a 67 uh -huh. when they come out with the 440 in the GTXs. Uh, in 66, you couldn't get a 440. Okay. Uh, they didn't do come out till 67. In, in the B that's bodies right. with them, but... In this, in 67, in 66, you could get a 225 six cylinder, a 273, a 318, and this car was a factory 361 Golden Commando car, oh, a 383, wow. and then 66 was the first year for a 426 Hemi. And uh, so this didn't come with that. So this emblem, uh, in 66, they were just flat, and then they had the motor size like. 440, which it didn't make, but it was on the back. Like when okay. we had the 426 so Hemi, it was 426. Okay. So they reproduced these 67s. And then this piece right here, it had gold commando. But to go with that, that's aftermarket. But all the okay. all this chrome is the original. And I just took it down, stripped it, then painted the gray argent and the black around it. So it's not perfect, but it's, well, it I, looks it's, all right. It's, it's a driver. It's pretty close this to This Belvedere Emblems in 97... Uh, I went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania after I bought the car, and uh, I found those. Mine were a little uh, uh, tarnished and stuff, so we done that. And, uh, oh, that thing's is, just uh, as clean underneath as it is. Yeah, I've got a new. Uh, we're gonna, I've got Steve and and, Char and uh, Charlie. They're going to help me. We're going to put a. Uh, I already bought the sway bar for it. We're going to. Uh, it was like I say, it was a Golden Commando 361 car. And but like I say, when you get looking inside. Uh, I kept all the original parts, but as you can see, it's got all new rubber, rubber. everywhere. I mean, uh, Steve and him even helped me. We took the, uh, there was nothing left in here. We took the dash out. We took uh, the heater box out. They make a rebuild kit for it. And, uh, but the car is just a, a turnkey. It's uh, beautiful. Just, it's, it, I, it's just, I, I'll tell you. It's one of the most beautiful black cars there is around well, here it, anyway. I'll tell you, you just put the key in it and... Or 66 it was uh that had a little bit of rust in the front fenders and i went to carlisle that year in, in 97 when dad died and i put this car away and it uh i found these front fenders rush free uh, uh a husband and wife were there with a they disassembled a 66 and he sold me both those rush free fenders for uh, 150 dollars in 1997 wow. but you couldn't buy no, them now but no. i mean so this car, it had a little bit of rust over the, the quarters and, and the fenders, but the, the, the trunk, the it's floors. It's a beautiful car. Uh, it had been sitting in a garage 15 years. Uh, when I found it, I heard, the story was it was a father-son project. Uh -huh. And uh, when they done it, the kid was real young, uh -huh. and the father died shortly after that. So it sat in a garage for uh, 15 years. When I And uh, then I got it, and... I didn't have any money, so I put it in a garage for 15 years. So it set 30 years before it even before. Now he had it running. He took it to the drag strip. That that kid growed up, and he couldn't keep tires under it. So he he he'd put a 440 in it and had it. Uh, it didn't look anything like this. It was turquoise, and but they had done a good job. But it had been a 15 year registration restoration too, you know. And then yeah. I got it and set it 15 years till I retired from teaching and coaching. And uh, yeah, black don't lie. It's so straight down the sides. 
I mean, well, the guy that painted it. If it, it if you had body had work that wasn't good, you, it would show up. Oh, it is uh, professionally done. Well, and being a low mile car, um, I think you know. I, I know you told me one time what you was offering. And I think that was a little low. Well, I you know I don't really want to sell. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah I know. come with the right price. Yeah, I understand. I have to, well, I don't need that. You, know, you don't. I, don't it's, I, it's, I couldn't build it. Uh, no, that's the uh, whole I mean, idea about well, this. Well, I couldn't find one this good. Uh, like I say, the no, tail lights to, are different. You'd have to put quarters uh, and everything piece, on an old rusty this one. This piece they sell, uh, you know, but... Was it a vinyl top car or did that just no, come with it? Okay, that's the, how they came? These came with a two-door hard top. Okay. And you see a little glue there where I yeah. sealed the things. I put a little too much on her, but that's 14 years old. But yeah. what you got to realize, this car has never been washed in 14 years with a hose. Okay. It's been wet at some car shows. The Mopar Nationals a couple times got me some different car shows because I drive it. But I take it home, put it in the pole barn, cover it up. When I take it off, I use that California duster right there mm -hmm. and instant detailer and wiper with a soft cloth. And so how many years? 14? 14. It's that been clean. Job. Since that, since you got it painted, that's the only way it's been clean. Yep. It's never been, had a hose on it in 14 years. That car's right. never been washed. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't get enough of this car. It's just so beautiful. And the sound of it, I mean, just, uh, it just, you hear the horsepower just screaming out of the exhaust. I think, I don't know, I know you said you wanted to go wider, but I think it just, it looks just well, right. I mean, look inside, like one more time there. Uh, if I would have went 18.5s, and I met an old guy that was dragging a GTX Hemi car, 67, You'd had to and he told me if I stayed 29 and not, I wouldn't have to stretch the wheel well. So uh -huh. everything fit under there. And, uh, but see, I got to keep the back seat and everything, and it looks, uh, well, it looks original. Other yeah, than the yeah. wheels and tires. It looks like what they call day two like you bought it new you put a set of wheels and tires on exhaust you know they call it day two items you know well it, it's been a lot of fun and like i say I, it's a driver i don't it's not a trailer well clean, you're a lifetime but it looks pretty good you're a lifetime mopar guy now can i ask when you was younger is this did you luck into this car or was this a belt did you always did you want a belt i mean was it something that you wanted when you okay. were well, instead of doing that other interview you want me to just tell you how this car come about then and dad let me stop. We, we said the lifetime thing. Now, how how did the car come about? Like, I mean, was this something like a like? I know you were a lifetime Mopar guy. Did you always like? Was this one of your top five cars you wanted or something? Well, the deal with it, my dad, growing up, uh, he was a he worked at a Plymouth dealership. Okay. And uh, when I was in junior high school. I mean, he had been a Mopar man all his life. He worked at the Plymouth Garage, but he always liked cars. Dad just loved cars. And then we eventually ended up with Sarah's used cars, our own car lot. But in the early days when I was in uh, junior high, Dad, as a demo where he worked at Plymouth Garage, he bought a red on red with the cloth inserts, 426 Hemi, four-speed car, Belvedere 2, but he ordered the satellite chrome. Okay, so it went around the had chrome up here and went along and the bottom here yeah but not like the 67 just had the wheel moldings and the rocker uh -huh. the 66 had the wheel moldings the rocker and the rear rocker that's okay. the year they done that well uh i just loved that car and you, you can imagine uh riding around in a hemi car with your dad when you're how old I was in junior high. Okay, so, so you had to be uh, 14, 13, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere around there because later on then, uh, my first car I got that Dad got me to start with my driver's license, I had a 65 Belvedere 1 post car, 383 Hearst four-speed car. Well, I drove it a while, and Dad had sold his Hemi car. And my uh, senior year, uh, I graduated in 1971, but it was in 1970, he come home one day, he went to the auction, and he brought me a black 66 Belvedere, looked just like this, except it was black with green interior, 426 Hemi, wow. four-speed car. Wow. So, uh, it just had regular rims and stuff. Well, I, uh, he told me over at the car lot, they had, uh, yeah, we're definitely... <laughs> Road Angels, that yeah. was my dad's car club, too, that he was in, in the 50s. I'll explain that to you in a little bit. But anyway, I had that black Hemi car. Well, needless to say, the first day I drove it to school, I got in trouble. 
I'd put a set of, about all you get was 10 inch sticks and I bought a set of uh, Magnums off of uh, Tom Rue, a, a new Roadrunner come in over there at the car lot and the people wanted white walls and hubcaps. So he jerked the red rings off of the Magnums and dad said, you better get over there. He's got those wheels of tars and uh, you can probably buy them right. So I went over there and uh, I bought them for $300, lug nuts, rims, tars. At that time, I put a set of slicks on the back rims and that's what I ran on that thing. And uh, got in trouble, didn't have the car too many months and uh, dad made me sell it. He said I was a nut. Probably uh, you to go kill yourself. Well, the, the deal with that was uh, my mom, when I was four years old, had got killed in 57 in a Dodge. Uh, it was the Hemi 2-4 car, even in 57. So mom was killed in that car. She was by herself and wrecked one evening and it killed her. But dad said, I've done lost your mom. I'm not going to lose you. So he uh, come home from the auction that week with a, he made me sell my Hemi car to my cousin, Mike Schuler, And uh, he had it. And Dad brought home a 69 Roadrunner, which is actually, when Dad got rid of his Hemi car and stuff, and then in 69, he ordered a demo 69 Roadrunner at the car lot. And that's what I took my driver's test in, was a 69 Roadrunner. That's uh, something to brag about. So I've had all these Mopar cars. Then uh, we, uh, with, with the Belvedere, like I say, I had to get rid of it. And Dad come home on a Wednesday, the auction was on a Wednesday, and he come home with a 69 Roadrunner. 33 four speed car butterscotch and I just wasn't into butterscotch but everybody said well you get all these cars I said, that's my dad deals cars we love cars we do this so he said come on on a Friday night football season was over and stuff so he said uh, we're gonna take a ride well we went out to Tansky's in Ohio and when we got there there was a 70 Roadrunner sitting outside the showroom 446 back vitamin C bent seat car orange with a white interior um, the big pistol grip, 446 back car, had 900 miles on an old man, an old woman bought a new and traded it back in. And dad goes, and we had that 69 with us we just bought, had it in three days. And he goes, there you go. He said, take that and try it out. And me and the salesman went, tried it out. And I said, boy, this don't have much. He said, what are you used to driving? I said, a Hemi car. He said, well, it's no Hemi. I said, you're definitely right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we come to the conclusion. My cousin was already getting this car. The, the black Hemi car that I had, and uh, so I settled on the, the 70, so that was my graduation gift, was a 70 Roadrunner 446 pack car. And actually, I'll show you a picture. We, we got pictures, that's a good thing it's, about it. There I was going to the prom, you see the red ring tars and the magnums on there, and it, uh, okay. Okay, the, there's a picture of my 70 Roadrunner, I went to three proms my senior year in that thing, and everybody said, they're just inviting you for it because of the car. I said, yeah, I know, but I'm still having fun. But there's the 10-inch <laughs> slicks you can see. There's the red ring magnums. And while we're on that page, there was Dad's Hemi car. And what I forgot to tell you about that, you see 1966. Uh -huh. There I was in junior high. And you see the car. There you can see the molding. That's the... Okay, that's that's, the, uh, that's Dad's car oh, okay. that he ordered as a demo. Probably okay. one of the first... Uh, Belvedere Hemi cars in the area because it was instead of saying 426 Hemi it said HP2 and I I think what I'd heard on that was on the HP2 car there was only like 50 of them made. Wow. Jay Leno's got one that looks almost exactly like dad's that car. That was rare. I, I've but, seen that video you're talking about. Yeah and on Jay uh, Leno. the HP2 car and I always thought it said for Hemi Power 2.4s but mm -hmm. when I researched it it meant high performance squared you know to the second power and nobody got it. So they ended up moving the 426 Hemi down oh. on the fender. So this so is a very rare that, car. They only made that for very few that year, right? I think like the first 50 or 50 some cars is wow. all the HP2 was ever on it. So if you had an HP2 car, you're very rare. The car lot, the owner, he had me driving this on the weekends trying to sell it for him, a Superbird in the 70s. You can see the on the side, 1970, you wanna, 1970. You want to talk about how... They, they're worth so much now, but they was hard to sell back then. Yeah, they, we nobody... couldn't, he couldn't sell it, so he yeah. had me taking it out on the weekends because right over here in Fonora, this is a parking lot. Back in the, the late 60s, early, that's where we cruised, and then went, there was Crow's Steakhouse. If you look up there, there's Crow's now, but you drove around it, then you went on up the bridge, and there was Adolph's up there. Mm -hmm. And you just had, every weekend, you had muscle car heaven. I mean, it was a cruise. <clears throat> it was sort of like so, that, even in the 80s. 
So <coughs> there, and there's a, there's a car mom got killed in. There I was at four years old. This was a, a Hemi with two fours. And uh, sorry, uh, sorry, that's dude. what she got killed in. Well, you know, life, I know things I, happen. I just can't. And not, then I got I out of. I cannot tell you sorry though. I, yeah. Yeah. Now this. Now here we I go. Remember. The Chrysler's. After I got rid of the cars. Well, I better you show you one in, more you went because into the four -wheel drive. I went into the four wheel drives. But I better show That's you. That's what I remember. There's there's what I drove to college. Then once I started working myself, I bought. I went to the E body, and uh, this is my wife. Uh, we weren't even married yet then. I took her to the prom the the first year she graduated, but. Uh, this this car was just amazing. I yeah. bought it off a friend of mine, this low mileage car. That's a 72 340. I run 456s in it, and it was uh, a lot of fun to drive. And is, I had it till, uh, beautiful. you know, I come back and taught at Wahama, where I graduated from. I graduated in 71 and come back in 75 at 22 years old and taught 33 years there. Absolutely beautiful. And the car's nice, too. It, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's true. This is a beautiful true. wife. Yes, yeah, yeah is. this was my gym teacher, and I, you know, everybody liked Keith Sayre, and he always had a, a, mo, a nice Mopar driving to school, you know, and he, he was always, I can never not remember him not having a Mopar. You had so many different versions. Yeah, of that, white that's one. a 74. The uh, there's the one there's I wrecked the, in 86. Yeah, that, I remember that one. And, and that, that's one of your last ones. Wasn't that it? was the last one I had. Well, no. No. Uh, there's the last one. Okay. My, uh, I remember that. And we took that one, and, and I had a friend of mine, we, we dropped the motor and, and had a 318 Beautiful, and put a uh, 360 crate that, motor in it with a Holley projector I, I mean, uh, I know throttle it's, body. That's nice. Now that, and, I, I, you know, I've had the Dodge, Dodge plate for how many years? I mean, yeah. I've Decades. Rent, uh, yeah, for West Virginia, so we got that. But, but and then also, there, well, there's another one of my trucks. Oh, that's that a had power wagon, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it had 44s. That was a 79. That was the only year they do headlight. And then oh, uh, my first year of teaching, uh, Dad called me and he found this at an auction, and I went and bought it. That was a '74 Chrysler Concord Three jet boat. A Chrysler, you can see Chrysler right on the back oh, of it. Oh man! There. So it was Chrysler, a 340. I did not. Jet boat. I've never even heard of those. Yep, it was a. Uh, yeah, never so, even knew you had it either. So I, I bought an old Dodge pickup to pull it because back then all I had was the Cuda, and I wasn't mm -hmm. going to pull that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, it uh, and there's the river I live on. Well, just right on the Ohio yeah. River, so you can uh, you can see we had fun. But I've had Chrysler products all my life, and here's the car. Here's this car when I first bought it. So it wasn't bad shape. No, it, it was a... turquoise with Keystone custom yeah, classics. I used to love those Keystones. And uh, then we, well, like I say, uh, Steve Durbin come up. But you can see there's the gold floors, and with everything out of it, the heater box and everything, we stripped it down completely, and uh, then. Uh, rebuilt the heater box. Everything's new in it. Uh, also, you had uh, the uh, when the guy painted it, he had it. Well, there's how we done the, the the frame rails. There's the other set of frame rails. Can you see that? It's kind of getting a shadow of our heads in it. Maybe, can we set it down there? There we go. Now we're doing it right. Okay, yeah, that's a lot. You better. got two frame. There's the existing frame rail. We just shaved the front off. And then there's where we put the seven and a quarter pieces in and come through with the other frame rail. So the car is solid. Then we put um, it's we put everything new under the front end. Uh, there's the, the H that. pipe. I love that exhaust. Um, which it does sound pretty good. It's a, it? Well, it looks like it. And the way it there she looks is. Good. There she is underneath. Still got the eight and three quarter. But I went away from my from had the rear end narrowed. Uh, now there, there's the only little bit of rust she had, and we had to put those patch panels. And you can see once he was finished with it, uh, then he painted everything before he put it together. Before he put That's, it together, as, it as right. you can see, uh, right there's the fenders, the hood, the trunk, the dash, and then here it is painted apart, and nothing was left on it, you know. And then there's I started the inside, but I wanted to wanted to show you the first day back from paint. If I can find that. Yeah, I can't I believe that paint's that. 14 years old and you drive it everywhere. It's not like you garage it. Well, I mean, in the winter and rain, but I mean, you drive it to the Mopar National, so that's pretty cool. There, there we go. There's oh, the first wow. day back from paint. I kind of like that. Look, that, that's, that looks wild without the grill and everything in it. Now that, still had the key, still got, you had key, is that Keystone? Yeah, that's yeah. the wheels that were on. And they've been on three different cars, three or four different cars that people's restored. I just loan them to people to, to uh, that's what they are now. They're old, but uh, Good then, then we started putting her together, and uh, piece by piece, and and uh, like I say, it it uh, 
Oh, it uh, it just took a while to get everything together, but then we started driving. I drove it like uh, five years without the chrome on it. See it there? It had yeah. the holes in the side because I couldn't figure out how to finish the chrome. Yeah. And it just took me a while. Now these set of wheels you've had on it since the key. I mean, have yep. these always been okay. Always yep. been that set of wheels. Always been that set of wheels, and it's just like I say, it's a nice car. Now here's Dad, and we're going to do this. Yeah, let's do uh, that. Because he's the reason. I reckon I love cars, he, yeah. oh, and he, he was a great he, car yeah, man. He, and he went by pistol. Everybody knew him by pistol. And this is the Road Angels. I believe they started in 1953. And here's Dad here. There's Pitt on there. He is there. I see. And I've Ed never seen him strips. a young. I never seen him as a young man. Well, they'd go to the local drag strips, the whole club, and and there's some trophies. Uh, then, in once I got this car done, uh, I talked to. Uh, a friend of mine, Dale Humphreys, and we decided, I said, you think there'd be an interest? Because the Road Angels probably went from 53 to 59. Like I say, mom was killed in 57. And these guys, they started getting married. Things happened. Mm -hmm. And they sort of, the club just sort of faded away. But uh, we uh, we actually put the club back together several years ago. And we was, I don't really know how many members we have now. Uh, this was our first year. And these are original Road Angels. This is Bob Roach. If, and people know yeah, him in our yeah. areas as a, just a man that had so much art talent and oh. everything else, stainless steel. But he's well, world known for building the the Mothman. Mothman. He's world known you. for that. And these are uh, these are Road Angel people that were still alive. Uh -huh. Bob has passed away. Uh, Sherman has passed away, yeah. which you know he was a national record holder several years. Alan Lee is gone. Uh, Bob's gone. Uh, Eddie Bumgarner and, and Jack Pickens still alive. I think there's only three or four of the originals. Oh, yeah. And we still meet in the park. This was our car lot over here. but no, it was, I remember. But it was a restaurant back in the day. Oh, see, I don't remember and that. that was... Uh, uh, the building's still there. Isn't the it? building's still there, and that was uh, a restaurant. But the guys always hung out in the town park, and uh -huh. this is the first year of our club. We're all in the, the, the park again, and, uh -huh. and uh, these pictures are... Uh, I think there's one here of... of back in the 50s and we we took that picture and put um right here uh there's a picture back in the 50s you see the the the, yep. the restaurant over there from the park mm. and it's taken from the same spot this is dale humphrey's truck and we took that just to show you that uh, we're trying to do the same thing that yeah the old guys you gotta done respect the past you and have to. and have a lot of fun that's but, what i love about this but dad dad was into it and Right here, I'll show you. I like, is, yeah, oh, it's oh, original. This is high school. Original jacket. This right. is original, and all these things are designed by Bob Roach. Uh, it's that was in the club. It's stitched. Stitching. And then it was an old Wilson jacket, and there's Dad's name, there's Pistol. Pistol. And the, they. Daytona 500 was big back then with the checkered flag, so that's what they done. I loved and talking I wore to Pistol. This in high Pistol school. was such a. You, I never did see the man not not smile oh, he, he was he, he all loved, if you was in a bad mood that man people. would cheer you up okay now here's my jacket okay we tried to recreate okay uh what they had what back they in the day that jacket so, looks perfect well, i mean I, I mean i see a little wear but i mean it's, it's got a lot i had, got to, to, oh, I had to put to have those sewed on it when I wore in high school because if you see it's threadbare see here so you wore that in high school i wore you this was proud, in high school. he's proud of your he's a proud Proud that, but son, like, yeah. uh, that is have, so cool. And, and the club today, uh, we try to do a lot of things. We we uh, ended up getting a tax number, so we're tax exempt. We have car shows. Uh, we just had one right here in this parking lot, and it was huge, wasn't it? A few weeks ago, like 90 cars in, in a town of 721. Raised. Yeah, that goes to the kids. We had to raise money for the kids for Christmas. People brought money, brought gifts, and then we also do a scholarship for our high school. And, uh, I did not know all this. And uh, it's the club. Everything we do, we raise money mainly for the, the Wahama Scholarship Fund. Yeah. And uh, we gave uh, two thousand dollar ones last year. Uh, wow. Uh, to local kids in, in our high school. That is so good that you're one. You're one you know, the car community. I think anybody that's in it will say it's one of the best communities there is. The people are so giving and willing to help. It's a. Uh, it is uh, a great community. And, you know, I grew up probably 70 in January, and uh, things were so much different back then, but I got to say that I grew up in a, a great era with, you know, getting my license in 69, uh, so 
the muscle car area. I mean, we'd go over that parking lot. You never knew who was going to bring what in. Pro street car, a drag car, uh, just 302 Z28s, Chevelles, uh, just anything. It was just a great time and every weekend. And, you know, to live in the muscle drinker. car era. That's yeah, a muscle I, car era. I wasn't a drinker back then, and, and we just enjoyed life, and cars was a big thing, and, uh, you know, we just had so much fun. But uh, Yeah, the muscle car era now, I mean, 50 years later, people are wanting these cars, but you actually lived in them when they were new cars, you know, well, newer cars. Like I say, that's how this car come about, because I tried to create my high school Hemi car, uh -huh. but I just can't afford the Hemi. <laughs> but that 440 runs great. I was running 410s for about uh, 11 years, and then the last three years gas got so high, so I'm running 323s now. Okay. And uh, but but like I say, the guy, Ron Polly built a motor. Great friend of mine. Good. And, he's uh, a good guy in the community, isn't he? Yeah, and he's a car guy. He uh, had a, drives. He's had a car for four uh, decades at 71 t37 cars now because we used to travel to all the shows yeah and steve durbin and charlie smith we travel and we go to carlisle pennsylvania every year we were going to norwalk they canceled it out last year we go to clay city we always as you can see that car has been the most yeah, them again with all those stickers there uh they, they the only one that's not there is uh the year of the covid they canceled the yeah. show so uh and you're you'll probably be going for but, the next five or ten years but my you? friend steve i'll tell you what he come up with all this how to tub this and, and people have copied it at the mopar nationals i show it with people because it's it's a great way to do it with no roll cage or anything mm -hmm. in the car with the two frame rails and he put brackets across to strengthen it mm -hmm. and then charlie come up with the, the 70 gas tank and he had to cut in there for the other frame rails to come out the back because People were trying to steal my gas cap at shows and stuff, and I put a screw in it so you don't fill this car up anymore at the filler net. Yeah. There. You go to that the back and do it. But uh, uh, you uh, you want to get me one up far enough to make a yeah. lap? Yeah, let's do that. Do you care? Uh, I brought another phone to kind of do everything, but we're doing so good with this one. I mean, All let's right. just keep it rolling. We'll just keep it rolling. I'll just make a little loop here so you can hear it. Yeah. It starts right up. I can't believe it, Keith. Early in the morning, when it's cold stuff, it's different. But once you run a little bit, it's great. And I want to thank Keith. I asked him um, after I got monetized. I really want to get the guy's stories behind the car. Keith is more than willing. He's more than willing to tell other people I want to do this. He's actually my first one to actually do an in-depth length like this. I do want to thank Keith there. I tell you what, I'm 55 and he's 70 and uh, my gosh, he acts like a kid. He's always like this, guys. He is always fun. Um Don't get much better than that, does it? You get the first shot of the video before it hits on YouTube. Junk Car Willie. You'll see this video up in about a week. Junk Car Willie. It'll be up within a week. You can actually say you're the first one to see it. Man, Keith, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I was just saying on channel, I was like, this guy is not putting a show on. This is how he is all the time. He is one of the happiest people. And the thing about being around positive people, you can come around Keith and not be having a good day. You go away feeling good. Um, he's just all about positive. And this is how he was in high school. I had him as a gym teacher. And uh, would you would you please say what you used to tell us about our stuff and about ourselves? Okay. I, you I, had the you same know, thing for decades. Yeah, I taught 33 years, and I started when I was 22 years old, back to my high school, and, and coached and, and taught there for 33 years. And I had two rules in my class, physical education class. Treat other people the way you want to be treated, and treat other people's stuff the way you want your stuff treated. And that, that meant don't rip people off in the locker room, take people's stuff, you know, don't throw their clothes in the toilet yeah. and stuff like that. I hated bullies, you know. Yeah. I mean, That's uh, true. He, I it, wanted everybody... Uh, and you didn't pick favorites. It was on participation. I didn't care if you was the 
the worst, worst volleyball player as long as he tries or that ping pong you know we done archery we done everything but we tried to make it fun i always wanted to say hey when you come to my class there's no homework there's no test come in here and participate give me your best and uh, it's a participation grade you dress every day you got an a you don't dress you don't do things my way it won't be real good for you. I was, but it was great. I loved kids and, and I enjoyed myself. You, and, uh, you never I, picked favorites is what I liked about well, you. I, you treat us all, well, you treat us equal. And like you said, it didn't matter. I wasn't into sports, but you treated me just the same as if, the, if it was a football player in there doing it that, that you well, was out there coaching. I, that's what I try. And, you know, I'm sure there's some kids that don't see it that way because they didn't want to listen and do things right. And I always tried to teach that if, uh, there's a consequence for your actions, and you know you have to own up for what you've done. But we can all have fun and enjoy ourselves, and that's the way I see life right now. I mean, this car. Every time I, I say I'm going to sell it, my wife says, "You leave here, you get in that car, you fart up, and, and you big come. smile comes on your face. You're having a bad day, you can go take a ride." And you know, like right now, this car will probably go. To the barn. They know I'm on video. Uh, Everybody wants to be on video, don't they? <laughs> I'll put it up on jack stands every year. Put the cover on it. When I bring it out next year, all I got to do is I cover it. California. Baby at all the uh, time I've not, I've only I've seen this man upset and, and he brought up something to remind, remind me of that. I've seen him when he caught a bully and he was um uh, he wasn't happy with him. You you made it sure that you did not like it. I remember uh, uh, an episode one time. But you uh, you that's what I think I like about you and you talk about a few well there's a few everywhere. I'm sure it's something they did. In our community, let's just say that everybody speaks highly of this man, highly in the car community, and I respect him, and I respect for what he's doing, and I just want to thank him again for, for doing this. A lot of people don't want to, uh, you know, talk about their car. Keith is always willing to talk, like he's talking about helping the car community out, and respecting the past. He's, he's still, and I tell you what, I'm 55. I hope when I get ready to turn 70, I'm still out doing what he just did. <laughs> well, you know, I do want to say one more thing. Tell me whatever you want. has been a big part of this. Okay. To, to let me do the things because. What's she call far, it? What's she call it? She calls it my. Uh, the other. other the other. Girlfriend. The Belvedere. Miss Belvedere. She goes, go over in the garage and get your other woman. <laughs> that's, Belva, that's your deer. <laughs> Belvedere. Yeah. Belva, your deer. And. I don't see you much during the summer because you're always with your other woman. Yeah. But during the winter, we take off and leave together, and but we have a lot of fun. But I also wanted to thank, you know, my life has been so blessed. Uh, the Lord has been so good to us. And, and I just want to say, you know, that, that without Him, things uh, aren't really very good for people. I mean, they got to realize that that's the life you need to, you want to live because it makes things good. And I'm sure that on the weekends, he don't mind me going out in my car and doing this and testifying. He encourages and, it. And being good. And, and, you know, when I go to the shows, people say, hey, we heard you laughing down there. We knew you was here. I said, life is great. It's what we make of it. Yeah. But I try, you know, why worry about things? Right. If something happens, it is, but you can try to fix it. But, but you know, if you got God in your life and, and you love other people, that's I reckon that's what I do. I said, where's the love if people are arguing? Yeah, yeah. Stuff? I said, where's the love? Come on. Now, we got to do things for each other, you know, and that's what upsets me about our country now. You can't even stop and if someone's broke down along the side of the road, it's pretty scary if you got your family with you to yeah. pull over and try to help them. Exactly. Uh, and that's awful that, that we've come to that. But as far as me going to car shows and stuff, a lot of great people. The people we meet are, uh, we've just got so many great, every time I go to shows, I just meet so many nice people. And, uh, I just, uh, and I appreciate for you for what you're doing, Willie. I mean, uh, you know, this is uh, great what I'm getting to do, but I mean, you travel all over and do this every day. And, and Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I you love cars and love what you're doing. My heart's so, there. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I, um, I tell you, uh, just you the way you are, you know, um, you're an inspiration. Uh, I, I do what I do, but it's nothing to how you've lived your life and being a christian man and you know and spread the word um 
you can be a Christian and have fun. Yeah. You know, you don't, you can't, you know, where's all the, oh, I, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to quit having fun. Well, you'll have 10 times more fun if well, you're a Christian. Yeah, and you, you remember where you was last night and what yeah. you done. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, there were parts in my life, I, uh, when I went to college and stuff, I yeah. started doing things I'd never done before. And I mean, I never drank beer before, but boy, I found out what it was like. And then I found out that uh, after about seven years later, it was, uh, it wasn't a good thing to be drinking all the time. And you, you just, you know, you do things that are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so uh, it, it is what it is. And I, I just enjoy the car. And I thank you for doing the video on it. And I want like to thank say, you. Dad was my inspiration. He was a great car guy. And he was a good I've man. Been in good man. My whole life. You know, I mean, I just, I just about anything you think of, I've had it. But back then we didn't have garages so you sold your car to get a newer car yeah and yeah i've got a lot of buddies in and they were just there. they weren't what they are now they were just like a new car that it was yeah. a few years old it wasn't you weren't thinking what am i going to do 40 years down the road yeah but as always i end my all my videos guys it'd be a boring world if we's all the same get out there find adventure and keep being you